Let's bring in for analysis uh, Ashley uh, Abrasadi, Senior External Affairs Manager for Management Sciences for Health and Chair Emeritus of the Global Health Security Agenda Consortium. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, the World Health Organization warning of a possible pandemic now. Uh, has the WHO acted quickly enough, do you think? I do think so. Uh, WHO is taking into consideration all of the extremely fluid information coming out of various countries. They are acting judiciously, they're acting effectively, and I think that they are mitigating panic with uh, messages of preparedness, which is exactly the correct message to enforce. Is there a real uh, sense that there is a, an accurate handle on this virus? Do we know exactly where we're up to? So I do think that the scientists are hard at work in discovering not only the etiology, the source, um, but also how the virus is transmitted, the incubation period, signs and symptoms, um, and, and establishing still as the as we get more information from across countries. Um, as I said before, it's an extremely fluid situation, and things are changing on the ground day by day. There is a sense that uh, the real story didn't emerge from China until we were well into this infection. Uh, there is con t continuing this sense of not really quite knowing what is going on. Now, that's not helping the public perception. Is it hindering the actual reaction of the professionals as well? I don't think so. I think China has learned a lot from the SARS outbreak um, in the early 2000s. They have transmitted and, and trans they've given a whole lot of information. They've been extremely transparent uh, with WHO. They have been receptive to external subject matter experts to assist with the outbreak um, within Ube province, which is what we like to see countries um, countries working together um, to help stop the spread and to identify potential new sources. So China, China deserves a lot of applause and accolades um, for how they are acting in the midst of the outbreak. I, I bow to your knowledge on, on that, and um, it's easy for me to sit here in judgment, uh, playing devil's advocate, because obviously I'm not there at the sharp end fight of the infection, so I completely appreciate what you're saying. Um, but many people are worried, and obviously in, in Europe, for instance, we're seeing more cases here. We're seeing cases in Iran. We're seeing cases in South Korea. Uh, it appears to, 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 to the layman that these things are happening in a very random way. Is that because of the nature of life these days, that people go to one place, go to another place and travel around and so-called super carriers will be taking the virus from place to place to place? Or could there be po another possible explanation, do you think? So I do think that we now more than ever live in a very interconnected world. And you're looking at China as an emerging superpower in the early 2000s with SARS. China is now an established superpower, which means that there were more trans, there, there's more transportation hubs. Um, so you're seeing more flights out of China to um, low middle income countries and also Western countries, which is explaining how the clusters of um, COVID-19 are spreading. I do think people should be concerned. I don't think people should be panicked. Um, but I think that the time for preparedness, as WHO has said, um, is now. And that could mean anything as as simple as having a contingency plan for your family, whether it's for if daycare is closing or stocking up on the prescriptions that you need that are routine, anything like diabetes medications. Um, also, like any other kind of emergency contingency plan, like a fire drill, know and have a plan for your family. Um, don't panic. Uh, but be smart, um, engage in social distancing if that makes you feel comfortable. Hygiene, basic hygiene is probably your best weapon. Um, washing your hands, trying not to touch your face. And if it makes you feel comfortable, um, maybe stocking up on some supplies for babies or pets. Can I just get you to run through those basic precaution, precautions again? I, I, is it as simple as the basic hygiene of washing your hands, as you say, not touching your face, not touching your mouth? So it is. it can be as simple as that. In something like a pandemic influenza, for example, where there is no vaccine, although researchers are very hard at work in discovering um, diagnostics and vaccine for COVID-19, at the moment, your best, your, your best weapons are going to be social distancing and basic hygiene, washing your hands, um, maybe not doing handshakes, doing the Ebola, as I say, the Ebola shoulder rub instead of um, shaking hands, um, not working when you're sick, uh, monitoring your family members, don't touch your face. Um, really very simple things that maybe can help people feel a little bit more grounded uh, amidst the anxiety. 
and in a place like France where uh, faire la bise or kissing on each cheek is something that every, everybody seems to do, certainly in our office, uh, would you say people should avoid that now? Um, maybe have a plan to stop if you see an uptick in cases or especially it's flu season now. Um, and as you can hear from my voice, I have a bit of a cold. So I would definitely say keeping your distance um, would always be appreciated when you have something that can be transmitted. Ashley, I hope you get well soon. You don't sound ill. You sound fine. You sound great. But thank you very much for your very clear advice and your very sound analysis of the situation. Really appreciate it from you. Uh, Ashley Abrasado there joining us, the uh, Chair Emeritus of the Global Health Security Agenda Consortium. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here in France 24.